and we can start it. So welcome to our today's seminar. Uh, it's a great honor for us at UQSFPE to host Dr. Atif Ali Khan, a lecturer from the University of Canterbury, a global expert uh, engineering with PhD in structure fire engineering from Hong Kong Polytech University. Dr. Atif has contribute to many industrial projects around the world. He started uh, engineering from the Institution of Fire Engineering UK and the uh, International Professional Engineering from the Engineering New Zealand. His research covers fire modeling, uh, structure, fire safety, fire investigating, and uh, the application of uh, artificial intelligence uh, in fire engineering problems and smart firefight firefighting. In today's seminar, he will talk about the comprehensive methodology for reconstructing the fire and the, um, and the structural fire, structural behavior during building fires and with the classical building fire scenario as a case study. He will provide um, the way to Im uh, improve in fire safety and firefighting strategy. So without further ado, let's give a warm welcome to Dr. Atif and uh, thank you all for joining us. So, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you for the introduction, very long introduction. And uh, I'm glad uh, that I was able to, and thank you very much for SFP, uh, University of Queensland chapter to invite me to talk about my work and which I think it's important as, as uh, everybody's research, of course, but uh, why think because I feel it's very quite untouched and it requires a lot of bridges, bridge from different uh, uh, different disciplines. So today I will talk about the uh, fire investigation in the form, uh, especially for the building fires, but I will try to keep this presentation as less technical as possible because fire investigation is not only related to fire engineers, it, it involves many people who have no knowledge of uh, fire injuring, for example, lawyers, judges, and insurance companies. There are many people are involved in. So I will try to keep it less technical, but people who are doing fire engineering and structural engineering, if they have any question, technical question, they can ask me after the session or they can send me an email also i will provide my email on my last slide so you can check on uh, our university website as well and i will be happy to answer to your questions after that if any technical and non-technical question as that because i was involved in some investigation study so uh, so as i said that i will try to keep it less technical okay so uh, fire investigation is mainly what we why we do fire investigation it depends on what our objectives are sometimes about human behaviors we want to do but building fires is more tip, more critical compared to the we are doing some other kind of investigation because in fire everything is almost gone and why we need to do fire investigation we want to learn some lessons and which we can implement so we will talk about that how you can do fire investigation in a buildings and why we should do. So before we go, fire is always a history, but if how old fire is, we all know that fire is as old as earth. And it would be a cliche for the fire engineers I use this, uh, sorry, somebody stop. Okay, so it would be a, a cliche if we talk about this fire triangle, it means, for, for a fire sustainment, you need only these three elements, fuel, heat, and oxygen, and you all exist since Earth exists. So we have the fire since we have, so we have Earth. So when it was occurring, and fire is occurring every day around the world, and it's killing people. Like uh, two months ago, there was a fire in Wellington in a, in a lodge, in a hostel where six people died. So, and it's occurring uh, every day, so we cannot, so, and every fire becomes a history and we have to study about it. So if we are talking about the history, let's go back beyond and it would not be justified if we are talking about the history and we, not, we do not talk about the Romans. The Romans were the first one and they have the most sophisticated uh, fire protection techniques. 
in very earliest time that culture was quite advanced and they were taking some precautions about the fire but it's still there was many fires which which were occurring there and this is one of the old oldest fire we can say which uh, which 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 makes our fire protection industries become more familiar it was called burning of rome in 64 AD in this fire almost 75% or 70% of the rome was burned down and people some historians historians believe that during this fire what happened nero who was a king he he deliberately started this fire this is the historian i'm not going to do about this uh, debate whether it was deliberately or not but what historians say that that he nero started this fire because he wanted to make a new city of his dream and but what happened after he he was building a new a new city there was some fire protection measures was taken what they did they they decided when the new building would be constructing, they will be using the higher percentage of the stones. They will reduce the use of wood. So you can say it was there started about to think about the passive fire protection at the time around 2000 years ago. And they put cisterns in different places so they can take water as early as possible and nearly they put in a strategic positions. So which is basically like current water tanks, what we are using. And they make started look distance between the two buildings so they st uh, make the bigger streets and i think if, in now in australia and new zealand when we are doing the performance based designs we try to keep the distance between uh, buildings so building distance we try try to calculate the radiation effects so this one had been started 2000 years ago when the after the rome burning i got another a historical fire is in the modern, which can be considered the first biggest fire in the modern history is the Great Fire of London, which occurred in 1666, around 350 years ago. This fire, again, it, uh, during this fire, almost 80% of the London population was displaced. So what happened after this fire? After this fire, what we learned, what the king distributed water buckets. This kind of water buckets were distributed uh, to different houses, so they should keep this one, which can be considered the modern extinguishers, which is required to have in almost uh, the core requirement to have in, in industrial buildings. So, and then you have a, the what they what was happening during this fire uh, it, in this London fire when they were trying to get the water, they they have to drill the the wooden locks, these kind of locks were there to take the water from these locks. So they have to drill at the time. So what happened after this fire, they tried to make the pre-drilled. They make the pre-drilled so that they can take water as soon as possible, which can be considered as the modern fire hydrants, which you can find on the street. And another things which we learned from there that comes is a building insurance. So they started in 1670 around, they started to doing building insurance. You can insure your building against fire. And even currently, the building insurance is the one which is a other than the enforcement from the government, it is the primary reason for doing the fire risk analysis and doing uh, this fire safety research. For example, if you want to approve your equipment and uh, fire safety equipment, you have to approve by it third party like UL and FM, these are insurance companies. And if you want to do uh, reduce your building's insurance premium, if you have a better fire protection system, then your premium can decrease. So insurance company is a very good, very big driving force. And it will start it actually after Great Fire of London. What happened? Okay, in the current fires, uh, we talk about in which recent fire is Greenfield Tower building, which is again, uh, causes a disaster where almost around 80 people died. So what what we can learn from this fire is this, what happened? We still is under investigation, but we are right to understand we still what we have, what we have is still sufficient or not. We are building new materials. For example, here in the facade regulation, whether these facade regulation and testing should be changed or not, we are still in our development, but we have to look about these problems. And 
we have to revisit our firefighting strategies, whether they are enough, they are sufficient, whether we are right or wrong, this is still in the process. So this is what this fire investigation needs to be done. And every fire accident happens, we have to go and analyze, go in detail and try to fix it, what problems we, we did and how we can improve. That's why this fire investigation is quite important and how this is how we able to learn. So usually fire forensic study for fire accident done for different reasons. First is for the criminal cases. For example, we have to prove that whether it is arson, it was the fire was done deliberately or it was an accident. So, and they have to prove in the courts. I think uh, the money mostly put by the public most of the time from the pu public proper public money means your taxpayer money you are the stakeholders you give for the criminal cases and sometimes it got it will be driving force would be civil cases it's basically driven by the insurance claims insurance companies would be like if you are asking for the crim insurance claims maybe i burn my house because i want some insurance money and and so they have to go for insurance uh, industries have to go insurance industry will ask you or investigator to do some uh, investigations. And if somebody died or some had major injuries, a coroner investigation might have to be done at all. And another reason is for, as a fire engineers, we are the professional or regulatory bodies, they will conduct the uh, investigation process so, so that we can know what we learn and what lesson. And again, as an it's very unfortunate that the engineers sometimes or sometimes most of the times learn from their mistake rather than their original success. They fail in the experiment, they fail in the reality, and they, they do. So sometimes the professional regulatory bodies, they are, conduct experiment, um, this investigation in detail, and then they can use for their design suggestion they will provide and how they can improve the test methods. As an example, maybe in the facade test for the after grain file, maybe there, there will be some improvement. So it is keep going on these days, and this is learned lesson learned by experiments. Uh, sorry, fire accidents, and based on that, when you can improve your design as well. So uh, again, uh, when you are doing uh, forensic analysis, this is a very simplified way, simplified. Um, explanation that first is what is your objectives what you want to do investigation not all investigation would be same first of all you have to go whether you are doing for human behavior so in when you are doing human behavior for fire investigation you will go mostly for the smoke spread history you will checking about uh, the corridors and that how the smoke is the smoke movement you will not be too much into about fire fire on uh, you will limit to the fire to the compartment you will not go to whole buildings about the fire is other than smoke and you will looking for the determination of uh, you will determine the, the what fails during the fires and if you are a structural engineer so then you you are more concerned is about the uh, temperatures thermal data and then you will not worry about the smoke a lot so this is the only investigation so who is paying money who is uh, uh, stakeholders it's important to first of all you have to decide the objective of investigation all in, uh, investigation may be different way and different doing different framework to carry out this investigation so first of all any investigation whatever you're doing so you have to collect the evidence for that specific fire scenario that's uh, you that evidence can be in many forms which i will discuss in later slides like uh, uh, visual evidence, witness report, witness. I will discuss about it. And once you have evidence, you will carry out some engineering analysis. The engineering analysis to eliminate or confirm the events. You you have to sometimes eliminate whether elimination is also very important. Whether what somebody is claiming is right or wrong. So elimination is, for example, I will give you an example of the word grid center for fire. In World Trade Center fire, when it hit the two towers in nine by eleven in USA, so some people were claiming that oh, it was it was the jet fuel which started this fire, but after just a simple hand calculation can tell it's not a jet fuel. If it was a jet fuel, it would be finished in two to three minutes, and the buildings was collapsed like in hours. So 
you can eliminate some some hypothesis very easily by even hand calculation and some then later it can become more complex and you have to carry out more analysis but this is the process you have to do analysis to confirm or eliminate the events and based on this analysis you will create some hypothesis you and this because this investigation might be going um, would be carrying out by many different agencies so they will create some hypothesis and if this your hypothesis confirms your evidence and your it makes conclusion and investigation outcomes uh, outcome presents what your evidence was showing after the uh, fire then you your hypothesis would be accepted by the engineering communities judges courts wherever you are presenting if it is showing exactly what you are what you found from the evidence so this is but again it's a hypothesis for example in wtc there are many different reports and some have different conclusions so what is big difference between when you are designing and and for when we are talking talking about when doing fire modeling or anything forensic fires there's a the big difference when you are designing design building is based on some statistical studies or you have to based on the societal risk that how much risk a, build, uh, a building owner can do so when you are doing some analysis you will carry out uh, some worst credible fire scenarios you will say okay these things again if this is a building this is a worst case fire scenarios and you will do some analysis and for example in case of structure of fire they will go for they want to calculate some building resistance uh, passive red fire re resistance they will use this iso curve or parametric curves is different kind of curve they can calculate but in forensic fire when you're doing engineering analysis or you are carrying out some fire modeling you have to present some specific fire because this is accident it is specific so you will present this specific fire which should be that should recreate or reconstruct and present the real fire events as close as possible so this is for, for the fire modeling so forensic fire is is very specific compared to design fires current practice is what we have in our fire investigation most of the if you go through any codes or standards or even some some um, textbook about the fire they would be mostly limited to the cause and origin of the fire they would be not talking too much about the structure they will just trying to find what, what was the cause so you will find tons of details how the uh, material ignite and how the uh, how it can increase the temperature what will be the radi radiation effect what the origin of the fire whether it was uh, originated from the kitchen so you you will have to you can find tons of a study but so far there's no study about this impact on such whether we have maybe not even we have there's no detail or any framework we don't uh, especially uh, collapse of buildings and how the build there is how structure behaving there was no framework and how we can do that investigation by separately everybody is doing some study but they're not going in detail how we can do this structure so why we do not have why we so far we do not have a detailed framework for uh, any impact on the section huh? can anybody tell me about it or oh. When do we start in care that we should have these? If if I talk about, if you see in the beginning, I talk about two, three fires, like fire in Rome, I was talking about the fire in London. There was a one thing and Greenfield Tower, there's a one thing which we started. It was catastrophic events. So we started to care only when we have catastrophic, we have a disaster, then society started to worry. Because we as a humans or as a, as a society, we care about something when we have some catastrophic, when we have a lot lar large consequences, we are intolerant for the high consequences. So this is what happened. When the Greenfield, uh, sorry, this WTC tower, tower collapsed in the fire and 
it was actually first building the WTC7, which was actually collapsed by the fire. And it was a disaster where arm, arm around more than 3000 people died in this fire. And then, then it made this society to worry. And, and that's what happened. And NIST and the government put tons of money in this uh, investigation. So you can say that uh, other than other than uh, starting this particular incident, other than starting a war in Afghanistan and Iraq, there is one thing which happens. It started to think about that how buildings behave in the fire. This is also actually an inception of doing complete structural investigation, structural analysis investigation. But because at the time there was no framework for doing so, whoever doing this kind of analysis for the for for WTC, they were improvising their methodology. Different uh, agencies they are using different methods, and what they say, okay, this doesn't work. Let's try another methodology. So there was no specific methodology. That's why you cannot find any code. So as I said, that when we are uh, only catastrophe, with let us know, let us do some new things. So to understand uh, these problems, we try to develop some framework that how actually we can do if we have to do, there should be some framework to do that one. So I, we try to work on that. So first of all, when there's a fire, when you uh, the fire start, uh, you go, because as I said, the fire is a history, it occurs. So first you have to go there and collect evidence. So what all the evidence you, because in evidence is very critical, whatever you're collecting, whether it's right, you have to, you should do a verification. So first, the one foremost required for any, this one, which I will find the most, one of the most important source of evidence is visual evidence. Visual evidence is like, can be a photographs, can be a CCTV footage, if possible, you can find, or, any videos uh, you can find it would be a good uh, source but al always what i want to you know that whatever resources you are using you have to cross verify this is very critical because you might if you you take the data which may be uh, not accurate accurate means uh, if you use some evidence which is edited videos or edited it can you can give the wrong um, output from your investigation. So cross verification is important check. So visual evidence is the wonderful source. Witness testimonies. Actually, this is interesting and I want to talk about it. And that's why I said that this studies fire investigation sometimes requires you to study about the social science as well. Because witness is this is uh, when people see the home. We as a people, we do not have so much experience of actual rear fire, rear accident, what, mostly our fire, as if we are a fire engineer, we have most of our experience of the fire only in our laboratories. And I think most other than that, I ever never see a fire in accident. So I don't know actually fire behave, how fire actually behave. And people who are the occupants in the building, they have no idea how fire behaves. Most of the experience they know about the fire is they know about, from Hollywood, from the movies, so, and movies, these things can be actually anti physics. They are sometimes not talking, they are just showing the fire the way they want to, as the director want to show, maybe. So, they will try to make stories after even they see, they are not deliberately saying lies, but they might see that, okay, okay fire behaved like this one. So, I saw. And so, sometimes their story can be changed. And another is very important because we people, have some tendency to believe others. This is called default truth theory. It's a def by default, we believe that other people are telling the truth. For example, one person see, okay, uh, he will tell that I saw a fire, it was coming from the window and it was later, it was coming from the door. And his, another person, he was talking, he told him, oh, I see the fire was coming from door first and then coming from window. So the first person will think maybe he's right and then he will change his story because it is not thing. It was the people's by default, they believe others until they have enough doubt. 
And as a fire investigator, you should have enough doubts. You should know, you have to verify this. So whenever you are taking the witness testimonies, uh, they are taking their reports, always try to talk to them alone, single, single person. If you have five people, let's talk one person one time and another person one time. Do not let them. And it is better you do very early. I will give you one example uh, where, about this default truth theory. I want to just share with you. Uh, there's a one in 1938 when there was uh, the Hitler was starting a war against, uh, of course, a uh, world war uh, about to begin. So some people went and to meet the Adolf Hitler and uh, Hitler says, and when whoever met Hitler, he told that, oh, there would be no war because Hitler is against war because he believed. And whoever did not meet Hitler believed that there would be war. So it was the problem with that, that when people are talking, they believe that somebody is telling the truth. So this witness testimony, that's why I wanted to talk more. So, and this is the very most important event because when you do finish your fire modeling or you come to the conclusion or hypothesis, you have to confirm with your witnesses uh, who are there. So otherwise, if you even you're doing a smoke modeling and this thing, this witness reports are very important to just justify or you make a conclusion. Firefighter testimonies is also important. And fire testimonies is they can be, they are also human. They can be also uh, sometimes they can have also some misunderstanding or something. Maybe they see fire differently, but at least they know about the fire more than others because they are doing with the experiments they cannot they will not go anti-physics so they they are one of the best resources also for the fire and media media is a very important source especially when you are collecting the visual evidence because their evidence would be the truthful they will not edit the videos they will not edit but just take the facts from them because their conclusion can be biased depends on who is paying them and this one just take the take their data from the facts as when you're doing investigation you have to have enough doubts to very if you want to make a verify you have to do at every stage and every evidence you have to verify many times in the beginning when firefighters finish they have to uh, uh, write a report that would be very helpful for you to understand the fire and what lesson learned and because as soon as they finish their uh, task and investigation they have to write a report if you can get that one that's very helpful and if you are doing research you're carrying out the research paper so then you might be doing a year or two years later after the incident then you can use some published report from different agency you can use and try to get as much as data you you can use this published articles can also help which is actually did to me the last of the document, some kind, if you are doing some notorious fire or some we call say famous or unfamous fires, for like for example, WTC and other, then there might you might find some documentaries that again documentaries is also good, but again, it can be biased or opinionated. So use only for only for facts and data to collect, you have a big database to create the database and you have enough. So after you have all these data, you, you gather the data, try to keep this data in a repository and you can have all these data with you. So because in every incident or whatever the uh, you are doing in your study, you have to come back and verify with this data with your evidence. So always try to make uh, the gather the data. and. After you have a data repository, you define, you put, and this then you have to define this data in a way which can tell you some story. You have to define so that can tell you what actually happened. For example, if you have a two photographs, you have to put them in a way so which tells you a story, how the fire is spread. So you can use like a detective wall, put the pictures at different location and see which one, which. So you have to read each picture or each image or whatever and verification and you put some timing on that for each picture at what time it can it can be sometimes like if you are using data from the media so you can get even the metadata from the uh, when this uh, photos and picture was taken so you know the exact timing of uh, this one so this is refining data is is i think it took the most time 
to because it will it is about to get you the story what actually happens because this will help you to create the timeline of different events which because in a fire there would be some critical events for example when the firefighter arrived when the fire was initiated when the firefighter arrived and when they started uh, to suppress the fire if there is some structural changes occurs if for example one fall uh, when when the windows fail when when for when some floor will collapse so this kind will happen so based on once how good your data is refined better the timeline you can create so these uh, these two particular events would be very very critical defining that and coherent if you want to create a good timeline for any uh, if you want to create a, a detailed fire, fire investigation accurate for sorry if you want to create the accurate or more estimate you can estimate the fire spread history based on your how many critical events there so between these all critical events or in the timeline you have different events so you know that how the fire from one time to another time how the fire reached from one location to another location when for example in uh, a fire when another when the firefighter arrived at the scene and when fire start, they started to suppress the fire means they were using their hose line and these things for example it take 10 minutes so you can see in the first 10 minutes where the fire reached so this is uh so as i said with more defined more better the data you define you get the better timeline and you get the more you can estimate better fire spread history so after if you uh, because in different time events there is some gaps and if you fill these gaps and you were estimated you can cal you have you can put the data and one of the best tool at this moment to recreate a building fire is cfd tools cfd cf uh, this computational free dynamics models which we uh, they're generally most popular is fds so you must know about the fds or cfd don't use uh, without knowing what it, it can do, you must know what it cannot do. Because these tools have some limitations. If, and you should know that whenever you are doing some investigation, somebody gives you a project to do the investigation or you're doing even research, always try to put that what these models cannot do. For example, if somebody say, I want uh, some ignition, if you have like 100 objects in particular room, so you cannot do analysis, this complex physics, co complex chemistry model. You cannot do uh, so easily if you want to do it in this, uh, in this way. It will take like years uh, to do simulations and maybe not accurate. And especially in because as this is a specific fires and you have to calibrate. You have to keep going through your evidence and see whether this matching with my, my evidence or not. So you have to calibrate this. You cannot make accurate. You can calibrate model and match with your gather uh, with your evidence and after doing this uh, cfd simulations you can put the any thermal boundary condition or thermal data maybe temperatures heat fluxes and can provide to the structural engineers or for doing structure analysis and this data can be can be used uh, wait a second i have some uh, chat uh, some questions if anybody questions have uh, they can use their audio somehow okay then okay i will try to answer all these questions after this presentation so now as uh, we discuss about how what is the how this framework uh, does work and we'll try to do I will try to explain you how I use this framework to reconstruct the fire of the one one event which occurred in Iran in the Plasco buildings. This Plasco building, the fire occurred in also in 2017. In January 2017, this building was built 1960. It was one of the tallest at the time. It was built was the tallest building, so it was quite 16 floor building in the in the Tehran, the capital of Iran. So there was one fire occurred in the building and so it has like two towers uh, the 16 floor south tower and five floor shopping complex but fire occurred 
started at the 10th floor of this building. And then before firefighter arrived, this fire reached the all there from 10th floor to the, the their top floors. And within three and a half hour, this whole building was collapsed. And uh, 32 people died in this fire. Uh, uh, including 16 firefighters. So this was a quite, uh, quite a bad story there. So what I did try to, as I said, that I tried to collect the evidence. It can be the woman's well, visual uh, evidence for them, the photos, videos. I tried to contact some people in Iran and I got, went through some different reports which are already, already published because I started this work in 2020. 2020, so after three years, so some of the reports were already there. And uh, some are Persian. I talked with some of, my, some of my Iranian colleagues and discussed about it and how, and I went through some documentaries or uh, whatever the evidence I discussed before, I went through that. And based on that one, I tried to put data first, based on that, when I was refining data, I tried to see the each image from different, different angle or different directions. So like north, west, south, east, and I try to put the data based on the timing. It means this event occurred after that, and after each event, I was trying to go in each direction how the fire was moving, had spreading in each direction. <coughs> so I was able to do. It. So we, I call this fire evolution, how the fire evolution. So I map all data for all direction. So it was much more than these pictures. So based on uh, this, as I said, from the refined data, what I did, I was able to create a timeline. What are different events occur? For example, this when fire broke out at 7.56 a.m. And then firefighters, it was very close. Firefighter was able to reach in within four to five minutes. But when they arrived, according to the witness and according to some firefighters, uh, even visual evidence, for example, if I see uh, in the first figure, you can see in the north side, uh, somehow my pointer doesn't work, so, but, but first image in the north, you can see there's no, no firefighters because they, you cannot see the hose line of the water and that you can see fire is already reached almost top close. So before, so I know that this, this picture is before firefighters reach there. So I can put that picture between 7.56 to 8.01. So this is the, how different these critical events help me to put picture and put uh, the history or history of the images or are able to make a file spread history or estimate the file history or based on the critical events. And once I was able to this fire evolution map based on this critical uh, timeline, I tried to verify with the different testimonies of the with different in, uh, interviews of the firefighters. Again, there was some, some interviews I was able to find uh, and some of the people I worked with, the uh, people from, you know, from the Iran and discussed and cross verify all images and this timeline. So this timeline includes all these critical events. So then what I try to do, I, I try to make map means I put all all, all floor plans and different time event like different event one event four event until for different uh, time uh, different events I put on the floor floor plan and try to see for each floor how the fire was spreading I seek from the images so where I can see because unfortunately in the Plasco case there was no one inside the building I mean uh, some of the floors even firefighter did not uh, did not go there they reach until two floors above then they didn't go. So we have only most of the data is from the perimeter. So we see uh, whatever we can see and try to see different events where might be fire because how the fire behavior, fire behavior, I try to go to different experiments and I see that how actually fire move and what should be in with this event, event where might be the fire. So as I said, did the, Objective of this study was to understand the structure. So, but so that's why I tried to make only the fire spread history. If you are studying for the, your objective is evacuation and human behavior, you might have to create the smoke spread history as well. But here I was trying to do only flame uh, fire spread history. So I based on these uh, events uh, and means timeline and based on 
uh, so evidence I was trying, I was able to estimate some fire spread history. And to uh, then after doing all analysis, I, I have to uh, go through and check what was the fuel load and ventilation condition. This is the most critical when you're doing fire modeling, you should know what would be the fuel. But exact fuel is almost impossible uh, too because why, that's why this fire investigation becomes more critical than even the airline industry. Why? Because in, if there is a plane crash, you have all the steel wires, you can put it and you can reconstruct it and can see what was a failure. Of course, not that easy, but compared to, but in fire case, all fuel is burned. You even don't know uh, what was there. Uh, if you have a desk in this location, in one location, you don't know where it was. And, and the uncertainty with fire is just so huge that even you just change one door, uh, means door open or close, fire behavior will be completely different. So to understand that one, I try to go to defend, again, uh, some um, data from this um, testimonies and see what is actually condition it is. And then, for example, what was the, if there's a false ceiling, the how fire is moving from one location to other, and what kind of material was there. So in Plasco building, most of the things uh, was the textile, most of the material was textile, so that I put in my CFD modeling, I use uh, some textile materials, heat release rate or their heat materials as a, uh, based on this and ventilation condition I checked from there was when it was opened or it was opened from the uh, videos and when it might be broken. So most of the time it was, uh, unfortunately it's mostly there was, there was a, this complete open fall ceiling. So there was air all the time there. And based on all this data, I try to calibrate the CFD model, try to do simulation like many times and see when the fire is uh, looks somewhat similar what we see in the in the visual evidence and try to match with this after doing that. So I will not say the perfect, but we can go. We have to check up, check how much the computation cap capability we can use. What is their limitation? What is their capacity? And how much computational cost we want to spend on this particular investigation. And then based on that one, I not only vertical, then I try to check this uh, horizontal fire spread too. Like in Plasco case, what they have, they have a continuous false ceiling. So fire can reach from false ceiling to another compartment very easily. And that is why it shows uh, the horizontal fire spread. So horizontal and vertical fire spread, I then I try to do for floor by floor based on a spread. Is, uh, so I did from 10th floor, 12th floor and 13th floor because the fire was similar to 13th to 15th floor and the location of starting fire was similar. So as an structural engineer, I can go for this. And this would be reasonable for me to not to do for 15, 14, 15. I can use the same thermal data with the temp, different time lag, uh, different time I can start. Uh, for different fire, fire for 13, 14, 15. So I have to, I make some simplification for my study. And then I try to uh, recreate uh, recreation of the, this, after this calibrated CFD model, try to show me how the fire spread at, like after like 10 minutes, what was the fire when I can see when the firefighter started maybe after like 20, 25 minutes, fire was already reaching different location of the fire. And after 10,000 seconds, like after three and a half hour, I try to see the fire, whether it's matching with the visual evidence. So I can see the fire reach from north to south in, in three hours and it reached to different locations. So I can able to show somehow uh, the traveling fire behavior uh, from the CFD model with a very simplified way based, uh, by matching with the visual evidence. So this is uh, basically for uh, this fire investigation, especially when you're doing a structure, it's not a one field people, as I said, even for engineering analysis, it required the expertise from fire engineering as well as structural engineering, or you can say structural fire engineering. So fire engineer will, as there, if you want to create the CFD model, they have to do some data collection and this thing which we are talking and the data mapping because CFD and when you're doing CFD analysis and you are to do a structural analysis for a finite element, they are totally two different uh, domains. 
in CFD, you are doing fluid domain, so you might be doing uh, your data will coming in a different form because you are your mesh size, for example, your do computational domain is much bigger than structural. So you have to have some way to do data mapping so that data mapping means what data you want to do for analysis. You do like temperature, thermal data, heat flex data, and then you can use for heat transfer. And after the heat transfer analysis, you put that what automated structural temperature or structural conditions, then you can do this structural response analysis. And this part is uh, done by, by my colleague, so who's doing structural engineering. So, but until data mapping and this heat transfer analysis, I did, I did that, that one. So to do that, this is as actually through different software, CFD and, and finite elements, so I uh, we dis we create one uh, CFD finite element coupling tools open fire and it's a very or it's a open source uh, is for for finite element we were using open seas and for FDS we use uh, sorry for CFD we use FDS models so this is an open source uh, CFD finite element coupling you can download uh, from our our GitHub GitHub page so we we develop this tool if you want. Again, I don't want to go more technical. If you have any question and these things about, you can ask, but this is how we did. You use different software to couple uh, this open, to couple the different softwares. And then uh, for as a boundary condition in initial study, we use adiabatic surface temperature to understand how the fire behave, uh, fire traveling fire behavior and traveling behavior temperatures from the CFD models. We use adiabatic, but again, as this tool can do for other temperature, other thermal boundary condition can also be taken. Uh, for example, if you want to use heat flux, you want to take gas temperature, you can take. And from there, you can see uh, figures, uh, the temperature is very high in the northwest corner where the fire started, but later temperature is below, much lower, for example. But in the south southeast, which was the final location of the fire, is much higher in the later stage of the fire. So we were able to represent, excuse me, fire, fire temperatures. And after this uh, thermal uh, temperature data, this is uh, done by our my colleague. So we try to do this time temperature history and try to put uh, in a thermal mechanical model. And in this thermal mechanical model, we try to able to show that how actually structure, how this structure behave and this thing. But this particular I'm very detailed, I'm showing only for this one floor, for 13th floor, uh, we are still this, uh, for whole building, we are still in the process. So I will not uh, go more detail about it, but but we try to show that how this column were sagging uh, some occurs and there, and we try to match with the visual evidence whether this one, but again, for detail for this structure analysis is still going on. And, but this is the way you can do uh, a detail. If, yeah, again, for structure analysis also, you may have to calibrate the model many times and to check. There. So this is uh, this is what uh, let me summarize what we talked. Uh, we talk about that uh, this fire investigation generally depends on your objectives, what you want to achieve, achieve, what is your stakeholder who is paying you money to do analysis. If the NIST is paying for a structure analysis, or you are doing for human behavior, or you are doing for uh, firefighters uh, for, to for firefighters want to learn some lessons so they will ask you for different kind of studies and as we see that it is possible to reconstruct the building fires we can reconstruct if we have uh, some enough evidence we have enough uh, enough data which we do and uh, if when and we are doing modeling again for that one it depends on how you collect the data and you have to verify this data what data you are doing you have to verify with different resources and match with that and when you want to create a fire spread history you first have to create some timeline timeline of this event and then try to fill the gaps between two events that can give you a you can able to estimate a very reliable, reliable fire spread history, or you can say reasonable fire spread history. Not uh, so, and then you can make a CFD models can be calibrated again. Never say that it's a real fire or accurate fire. It's always estimated and calibrated, because we know there are a lot of limitation of CFD tool. 
So whatever you're using, whether you're using resources or whether you're using CFD models or fire modelings, you should be aware of their limitations. So you should know, always say, always be aware to say, no, that this is not possible and because everything is gone and I can't do. So that's, uh, I conclude uh, my current, uh, this talk as uh, I hope, uh, but I, as I said, I didn't talk too much about the, technical detail, but I would be happy to talk. You can send me an email, you can discuss, we can discuss and talk about this fire, any fire investigation tools. And thank you very much. And this is my email ID. You can contact me if you have any question. And I'm, I will try to answer this if I can now as well. Thank you. Um, thanks, Dr. Atif. Thanks for your uh, such a great presentation and uh, really easy to follow and really interesting. And uh, I think um, uh, a lot of audience feel in the same way because we already received, uh, generally speaking, four questions during your presentation. And yeah. some audience actually tried to answer uh, as well. So they already start to talk about it. So oh, yeah. the first question is uh, from Demir. So he wants to uh, know when you talk about the investigating parts, uh, will file report has only objective information where can they often uh, contain witness statement from the firefighters as well that's the first question we yeah uh, so one minute your, your question is uh can you uh, make can i read somewhere yeah yeah, yeah. it's uh in the chat uh, okay. chat blush yeah all right if uh if, you, if you'd like i could actually clarify just explain uh my question there yeah yeah please uh, yeah, so basically I've already received a few answers which were helpful, but I'm wondering more uh, with fire reports, do they often contain uh, not only say a fire witness statement, but something that might be, uh, even though it comes from an educated source, something that might be say like the internal smoke. Uh, if a firefighter describes this, obviously there's quite a room for error. Is that something that might be included in a fire report and therefore it can only be taken as you know for doubt as well basically yeah yeah that's uh, that's uh, that's a good question and that is what actually i was trying to explain that witness testimonies can be very sometimes very uh may not you will not accept or don't accept that again if you verify that and it verified you you should always keep in your records that's very important because anyway in the whenever you create fire spread history you have to go back and you have to show your witness and this thing whether they actually see the fire in this way or not so this is witness testimonies could be in the report definitely it should be uh yeah i would keep it but again i have to cross verify with other other witnesses also if i have like enough witness and i have again as i said default truth theory if you have enough doubts and if this doubts clear is cleared and it doesn't show that it's not a lie or it's not a deliberate again these people are not deliberately lying as i said they and um, they this is what we human are but if it makes you uh, it it confirm your events then you can accept it and can put it and i think firefighters also keep the evidence witness testimonies because they would be used in the court as well right i understand yeah uh thank you for that yeah and uh we have a second question from what's name uh, also he posed uh in the chat meeting chat yeah so, sorry uh what is this question uh, which may was same uh, from was same and uh, like uh, thanks for the presentation was it different between the framework did you find something one minute three is from yeah because it's a relatively long uh, question yeah which one uh, the standards can vary uh the action review will have objective information including information uh, sorry, I cannot see which questions. Uh... Um, it's just um, he wants to know what's the difference between the framework mentioned in ASTM and the standard guide for evaluate uh, project uh, capability of uh, yeah the one for the fire model or fire models. 
Okay, all oh, got it. Uh, time for what is the difference between the framework mentioned and the ASTM ASTM standard guide for evaluation for predictive capability or deterministic. Okay, uh, again, as I said, these models are giving some deterministic values. Uh, for example, your deterministic values, uh, you are doing uh, some fixed, uh, like if you are using, for example, uh, it's similar to uh, you're using this kind of models, which is you're in the design guide. So they, these are deterministic value, but you can see that it's uh, very difficult for the fire investigation where you need structure, especially for, we can see the realistic fires. They're not creating anything like virus spread history. They're not going in detail. I'm not saying that that is wrong, but that is a very, very crude approach to doing any analysis using these kind of models. You cannot use them. Uh, they can use them for the for design files, but not the, for specific files. Uh, I, I, I does it does that does it does it answer your questions? Uh, excuse me. Right. Can, can you hear yeah. me? Can you yeah. hear me? Does, yeah. Does it answer your question? That what I'm trying to because uh, these models. Right. Sorry. So uh, you what these models like ASTMs and these things, they are using right. mostly crude approach and they are using mostly these models are used uh, for deterministic fire model. They use for the design purposes and you can use, but it's cannot, they are not creating the fire spread history and these things. So that's why they're not an approach to doing fire investigation. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm not sure if they are not about the fire investigation, but like the way they assist the model is that also they look at like the key events and then they like calibrate the model to fit those key yeah. events. So yeah. I just wanted to know if like there is differences between the framework okay. to mention yes. or yeah. Yeah, this framework because few things which I actually did not cover uh, here. So in the framework, if you go through my paper, I am writing, if there is some situation, some conditions, for example, the fire was in only in one room and you can estimate this, you can apply these models where you have like single temperature in a compartment, whole room is burning, you can use it. But when the fire, especially in the large buildings for WTCs and Plasco building, definitely you cannot use those tools because the fire was not at one place, you cannot use single temperature, similar single thermal data, their fire was spreading. And at this moment, we do not have any deterministic models that can tell you the any traveling fire behavior. Uh, we do not have any at this moment, whether ASTM or any any other, other, other even British standards, no, we do not have. So you have to recreate, you have to recreate models, uh, rec means, some way you have to reconstruct the fire, which is these models are just making you prediction only based on some uh, term. So we do not have any deterministic model anyway for this kind of behavior so far. And okay. uh, I, I see Jennifer actually raising her hand. Is there anything you want to add or any question you want to ask? Yes, thank you, sir. Um, thank you, doctor. Um, I just wanted to comment that I commented in the chat. I, there seems to be some confusion. It's, this looks to me like um, after action modeling, yeah? Sorry, can, can you please one minute? After, after action modeling? Uh, yeah, yes, yes. It's uh, of, of course, but for all for investigation is after. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think there was some confusion going on with the... Um, the ESTM guides and, oh, and, okay, the, okay, okay. Yeah. and that, that's, you know, prevention of the fire, not um, what you're doing, which is brilliant. Yeah, de de definitely, definitely. Uh, that, Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's actually what I was trying to say. These models are basically for uh, design fires or something designed, not for forensic or specific fires. Yeah, no, brilliant. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, 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 yeah. I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, good morning, sir. I'm Rishiraj from India. Yeah, sure. Uh, sir, I wanted to know about uh, thermomechanical analysis. Like, is it coupled with FDS or uh, it is a separate thing? 
it is uh, it is what we do here because as uh, like in fds also you can do but it's not crude and you will not going to run your simulations for three hours four hours so what we do we take uh, the, another finite element tools which call we call open seas you can use abacus or other on ansys anything and uh, so what you do you take the fds data uh, here we call this uh it is one way coupling it's also not two way so what we take uh, we, i'm trying to, so we take uh, this th thermal data from fds model and transfer the thermal that temperature data in in our case we use like for example adiabatic surface temperatures then you map this data which can directly link to the all bit elements and whichever your structural elements are there, you can transfer the data and you can do thermomechanical analysis. But after doing heat transfer analysis from the data obtained from FDS, these are two different tools, but you can couple it so that the temperature go to the right location. Because you do not have a structural model in FDS and, and FDS doesn't have your structural details. And because you what you're doing is structural is you have different kinds of elements, like beam column elements, shell elements, so this thermal data can go to there. You can, I de we develop this tool. You can find that data mapping tools on our GitHub page. So you can go through one of my uh, recent paper about the fire modeling from, especially for this framework. It explain you how to do that. So can you share the link of the page for uh, that GitHub page? Uh, sure, sure. I can, uh, later I can, I can send, uh, you can send, send me an email. I can send you. Okay, okay sir. Thank you, sir. Hmm. And sir, what was the name of the software you told for thermomechanical analysis? Uh, open open fire. In this slide, you can see. Okay. Oh, that is the software. I thought that is a part of a slide. Sorry. Uh, open fire. Thank you, sir. Thank okay. you so much. And uh, we actually got one more question from Damir. So he said, assuming the model created is accurate, are other variables a, uh, for example, like external force such as spring can be uh, estimated as well. I think it's a very interesting question. But again, uh, if of course uh, we can put uh, anything, it's uh, but again if we because some things you can put in FDS itself. For uh, if you are doing CFD analysis, you can give uh, some wind uh, wind effect. Also, you can add there. And it depends if you want to make it more accurate, you can definitely put uh, this wind effect as it means you can give some flow, flow direction you can put in uh, uh, there. And I think in the structure, as a, I'm not a structural engineer, but I believe you can put some wind force because wind, what in your analysis, you are doing some, some values from pressure, some force. I think you can add there if you can, if you have more accurate data. I think uh, if I, I know in WTC study, they use the wind uh, wind pressure there. If I, I believe they did, in the, when the NIST did the study, they used the, uh, the, some external forces, uh, wind, they use the wind uh, current. But I don't know if they're used for the fire modeling or structural modeling. But you can do that. That's definitely you can use because it's again, uh, if you're doing structure, but it makes your model more complex. We get uh, one more question uh, from Sharon. Okay, this is uh this is yeah, the impact of in, in, yeah. interesting about the FDS. Of course, in FDS you can do, but you should know what are their comp uh, what model they are using for for FDS. Their FDS have some sprinklers uh, to solve the sprinklers. So I will suggest you go to their their manual. How much again? As I say, when your FDS is a if FDS, if you are not going to the their manual, how what model they are using, FDS becomes a black box. It's a black become a black box, and you don't know what they are doing. You should know what are their limitation, what are their assumption, how much they can do. That's why I emphasize this sentence few times. You must know what actually they can do and what they cannot do. Pore pressure from concrete by FDS. Uh, I, 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 I per personally, because FDS is a huge, huge somebody. So I cannot answer all these things, whether it's possible or not. I think you go to the, to the manual about it because FDS, I cannot claim, I think 
hardly maybe in the world, almost like 10, 15 or 20 people can claim they are expert of FDS. So who knows almost everything about FDS, especially who are developers on this thing they can claim. So at this moment, I cannot claim, even we calculate this poor pressure or not, I cannot claim at this moment, uh, but I don't know myself. And so we got one more question. I just resend it because it's hiding in the reflex. Uh, re reflex. Uh, so, Sorry? so it's like uh, we got one more question from Stephen. Uh, yeah. Yeah, please, please. Uh, sure. But which question is the, uh, What's the channel? Yeah, he wants to know. I just send it. Uh, and... what, challenges, what challenges are issued in court expert cases from opposing fire expert to the modeling cases chosen? Uh, and are they discredited? I, I, I actually did not understand uh, the question. What challenges are issued in court expert cases? from opposing fire. Okay, okay, uh, to the modeling cases chosen. Again, uh, um, means what the court, court is, as I said, any, what even you are doing some analysis and these things, uh, if you are able to present, uh, and this have, uh, means uh, whatever the investigation you did and it matches with the evidence and these things, again, the court may accept, may not accept. It depends on the, again, <laughs> it's about the lawyers. If they're able to, I, I'm sure that they generally accept if it's matched with your expert, with your evidence, and this. And that's why I say in the framework, you have to go every times with the evidence. That's why I was tagging. You have to be very careful what your evidence. You have to verify many times. Go back to your get data repository and match with that one. If it's matching, they will they can accept and then accept it. That's again the it depends on the judge, lawyer, and especially jury if the jury is there. So, I mean, but but uh, your reports would be definitely would be if it's very good and it shows the presentation. So I don't know about the code, but the firefighters, they will accept it. The the code, code and regulatory bodies will definitely will refer your reports and try to get the output from your reports. And of course, the research community will be happy to know your reports. Uh, what any fire investigation in, uh, in the, uh, this one, but court, it uh, is quite subjective. Maybe jury accept, maybe one judge accept, one judge doesn't. And uh, I saw Jennifer raise her hand. And uh, is there anything you want to add or some question you want to ask? Yeah, I just I'm wondering, so, Doctor Khan. Um, yes. yes. You have your experience is in after action modeling. Is that correct, sir? After action, you, you mean this uh, detailed uh, fire spread history of these things? So, my, I'm a fire engineer. Yes. In fire engineering, yeah. yes, uh, this I do like this kind of analysis. Yes. So, so my, my, I just wanted to clarify that because there seems to be a lot of debate about the, um, about, um, like standards and predictability and we can't do that for individual buildings yeah in <laughs> i mean that's horrible but yeah. we can't we, we can only use the information gained from the the last fire to try to prevent or mitigate the next fire is that correct sir yeah, def definitely. This is what that I say that uh, I was talking about all fire accident because every accident teaches lesson. We have new things. We uh, uh, we have new challenges. For example, uh, Great Fire of London. I was talking. It was occurred like three hundred fifty years ago, but only four people died in this fire. And Grenfell Tower building, which occurred like three hundred fifty years later, and eighty people died because our challenges are also changing. Our material is changing. And so we cannot, can never be sure. And when you are designing, you are designing data based on uh, some some scenarios. You cannot make, for example, I cannot make my house bunker. Yeah, you will put a lot of money. So you have some acceptable risk. So always uh, trying to, for any design, you have to always have some risk. So, but how much risk you can accept. So all designs, pre, for example, we'll talk about the pre when you're designing, 
you always have some acceptable risk that I can take. So you will choose only few fire scenarios or a lot of probabilistic study when you are doing design. So design and forensic, yes, forensic help us to find new challenges and new and something what we maybe not consider. Have you uh, uh, heard about the Murphy law? <laughs> uh the yeah, so so it's it's a it's a fire fire accident is a mur it's Murphy law. Anything can fail. You never know. Even for example, fire alarm system. You say you have a sprinkler system. A sprinkler in USA, almost uh, like around eight to ten percent times sprinklers did not operate. No, I I'm Canadian. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm so I, I'm talking about about the because NFP has a very detailed data. So I'm talking about on their data based on their data. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I, so what I was seeing in chat was just a lot of discussion of predictability for individual buildings, like could have, you know, could, when you talk about wind, yeah. that, that's only going to be in an after action report. And like, when, if I'm filing an after action report, as a firefighter, um, you know, I'm going to be objective about what I did. Um, and then subjective would be what I'm seeing, what I saw. Uh, I mean, we use thermal cameras. Yeah. Right. So that would be objective data. And I, I guess I just felt like uh, that wasn't terribly clear to everyone. But um, uh, I'll hush now and thank you doctor no no problem thank you thank you thank you for uh, discussion and i would be happy to discuss if you send an email and we can talk if you have more question and you can help us also because as i said that so many people are involved in fire investigation not only fire engineers thank you uh we actually got a question like uh, almost five minutes ago it's like in your experience um of fire modeling how do you deal with unknown data uh particular like a uh, internal space without uh, without with no evidence of contents or fire oh. the flame spirit right how do you be unknown data particularly internal spaces with no evidence of content yes uh, as i i was mentioning here when we are trying to recreating this fire what i did uh, which we tried we have some some information so we trying to match with our evidence and if we trying to see the fire is reaching there so i was just trying to keep changing the fuel load inside the building until it matches my parametric uh, for a parameter fire or i say uh, the fire which i can see if it is matching then i can say my uh, Again, I said uh, it's calibrated, not accurate. So I was keep changing the fuel load in the between and different places so that my my uh, fire can match what we can see. It can justify with my evidence. Uh, so I was trying. So again, uh, you can never say in the fire investigation or any studies, you can never say that you have accurate model or your, your fire strategy is accurate because everything is burned down. You you can make a lot of and what cfd is cfd doesn't give you the reality cfd gives you based on what inputs you put so how better your inputs are there so you have to play with this one that's why we do not say real real fire model we say calibrated fire models yeah i saw another audience of us uh, want to ask some question uh, you feel free to unmute yourself uh sorry yeah, 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 I mean, feel free to, yeah. Yeah, yeah please, please, please go. go. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, I'm Anand Kumar from IIT Zodhpur, India. So yeah, sure. I'm a PhD student here. I'm working with Open file. So uh, with the use of this GID. So I'm a bit curious about whether this FDS uh, can be integrated GID. Or actually, not. GID is uh, actually, um, uh, uh, G, GID, you mean? Yeah, G Abacus, I mean, any which has UI like Abacus and Ansys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It is a, just a preprocessor. Uh, pre yeah, you, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you can means you can use because I did uh, when uh, I think my one of my paper, Open Fire paper, is there. So there, yes. I, I verified my OpenSys with Abacus. 
also okay. so you, you can use with abacus i don't know about uh, G, gid because some people are using open seas also with gid so we did with gid also but we trying to make this software free uh, and open seas for free so i try to do without gui version and we have another paper with my colleague anmar Arabi. we did uh, with gid as well and i did yes. with with Abacus as well to verify whether my result is as good as Abacus FDS can give or not to verify with the, some numerical simulations uh, with Abacus as well. So you can do only just you you should know if you know you have a good structural model which is matching with your fire models, then you can do it's it's a it's not very difficult process. Only just a programming. You okay. can use Python thank programming you, only. Thank you. Um. I think uh, it's a mistake where Jennifer has uh, another question or something to add. Uh, just feel free to unmute yourself oh. if you have to. I'm so sorry. I, 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 I didn't put my little oh, hand down. Yeah. I have lots of stuff, but no, I'm good. And I just wanted to say thank you. You're brilliant. And, right, thank you. Um, Be such like a really active, really glad. Yeah. <laughs> you but I, I so appreciate. I hope that there are more of these seminars. Um, yes, we and... do. We do. Yeah, uh, we're going to post uh, all the information on our uh, UQSFP students chapter, like our LinkedIn account and our Twitter, and then we also get a uh, uh, YouTube channel as well. Okay, just, I, yeah. I just. I stumbled across you on Eventbrite. So I'm going to take my leave. Thank you, Thank uh, you. sir. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Dr. Khan. I appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Well, uh, is there any last minute question? Because we're almost running out of time and uh, we uh, received a lots of question and uh, lots of uh, thanks from the chat as well. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm glad people ask questions. It, it makes me feel people were listening to me, so it's not in waste. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much for listening and, and having questions. I enjoyed it. Yeah, just, uh, we just, yeah, just the audience, there's no more questions. It's just audience say thanks and uh, the good presentation. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, so the presentation was really helpful. Thank you so much. I think we're about to finish it. Uh, thanks everyone for attending. I uh, hope you get a great weekend. And thanks, Dr. Atif, use your, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, holiday time. I just got Yeah, today's holiday. I didn't, I, didn't holiday know over there. <laughs> I didn't know it was holiday today. Thank you. But I, I enjoyed it. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.